Good evening. Or good morning. Good noon. Or good midnight. Whenever and wherever you're watching this. Welcome to the Sunday poem. Today it's a poem for the cold season. And it was written by Hannah Flagg Gold. Hannah Flagg Gold was born in Lancaster, Massachusetts on September the 3rd in 1789, and she only started to write poetry when she was already 30 years old. Her first book, Poems, was published in 1832. Some of her friends loved her poetry so much that they published it without her knowledge. But that was only the beginning. Over her career, Gold published another ten volumes of poetry. She knew of those publications, of course, and one volume of short prose titled Gathered Leaves. Her writing style resembled that of authors such as Charles Dickens and George D. Prentice, which led to one of her better-known poems, A Name in the Sand, often being attributed to those famous writers. Her poetry was often called witty, vivacious, and cheerful, and today's poem is a great example of this. This is The Frost by Hannah Flagg. Gold. The frost looked forth one still, clear night, and whispered, Now I shall be out of sight. So through the valley and over the height, in silence I'll take my way. I will not go on with that blustering train, the wind and the snow, the hail and the rain, who make so much bustle and noise in vain. But I'll be busy as they. Then he flew to the mountain and powdered its crest. He lit on the trees and their boughs he dressed in diamond beads. And over the breast of the quivering lake he spread a coat of mail, that it need not fear the downward point of many a spear that hung on its margin far and near, where a rock could rear its head. He went to the windows of those who slept, and over each pane, like a fairy, crept. Wherever he breathed, wherever he slept, by the light of the moon were seen most beautiful things. There were flowers and trees, there were bevies of birds and swarms of bees, there were cities with temples and towers, and these all pictured in silver sheen. But he did one thing that was hardly fair. He peeped in the cupboard, and finding there that all had forgotten for him to prepare. Now, just to set them a-thinking, I'll bite this basket of fruit, said he. This costly pitcher I burst in three, and the glass of water they've left for me shall chitch to tell them I'm drinking. 